The Biden-Harris electric vehicle push may just push people out of their jobs. No doubt the America First Policy Institute estimates a ban on gas-powered vehicles could eliminate nearly 200,000 jobs across the country, with 37,000 job cuts in Michigan alone, which is a, um, a must-win state for Vice President Kamala Harris. And those are just manufacturing jobs. One of our next guests is warning this could impact millions of jobs. Look at that, 2.1 million jobs lost. Joining us now, JunkScience.com founder and former Trump EPA transition team member, Steve Malloy, along with Auto Workers for Trump 2024 founder, Brian Pannerbacher. Great to see both you gentlemen. Steve, just focusing on the auto industry is not enough to understand, because Kamala Harris, the devastation to the U.S. economy, because Kamala Harris wants to go beyond just a tailpipe emissions regulation. She has said in the past she is all for co-sponsored the Green New Deal, and that is getting rid of the internal combustion engine. Well, Dave and Sean, thanks for having me. Yes, uh, Kamala Harris wants to get rid of the entire oil industry. Um, she says that she's for fracking. She's really not. Um, they're blocking pipelines. They're, they're they're killing the oil industry by a thousand cuts. Uh, we've blocked LNG export terminals. They're in the they're in the process of killing off the coal industry. Um, they're going to get rid of the entire fossil fuel industry. There will be. Um, you know, no more gas plants, no more coal plants, no more gas stations, no more internal combustion engines at all. We're we're going electric. Uh, at least that's what they want. That's what they say. Um, we're going to be completely dependent on communist China, and it's going to be a disaster. And to that point, Brian, is, is that why many auto workers are in a position to say, "Listen, we don't want to. We don't want to transition." to electric. We like making gas-powered vehicles, one, because we have a lot of gas in America. And uh, to Steve's point, uh, if we go electric, we're outsourcing a lot of that manufacturing and technology to places like China. Is that one of the reasons why you have so many auto workers coming over to the Trump side? Brian? Are you asking me, Sean? Yeah, Brian. Yeah, that's to you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, we know it's uh, an existential threat to us, so it's... Uh, you know, you saw the vote a couple of days ago by the Teamsters union members, and they voted 60 percent in favor of Donald Trump. And then Sean O'Brien, in a, in a total act of cowardice, still wouldn't endorse. He went back on his word because at the Republican National Convention, he said he was going to let his membership decide. Well, they decided 60 percent voted for Donald Trump. Then he came up with an excuse and said they couldn't get firm commitments from the candidates, so they weren't going to endorse. It's it's just an act of cowardice by him. Now, uh, in the UAW, Sean Fain came right out of the gate, endorsed Biden, and then endorsed Kamala Harris without a second thought, even though over 60 percent of his membership is going to vote for Donald Trump. And I know that for a fact because I've been doing plant rallies outside different auto plants every single week, Chrysler, Ford, and GM, and we're talking to the membership as they come out. There are thousands of auto workers that are going to lose their jobs if the government continues to push these regulations that will force them into building uh, electric vehicles. It is, a, it is a travesty, Steve, what has been, what these policies just in the last three and a half years have done and will do just to the auto industry. That uh, the Wall Street Journal put it the best, and I will just uh, repeat what they wrote uh, just about the electric vehicle transition. Has the government ever subsidized a product that loses this much money? And ultimately, <laughs> it's going to lead. Uh, Ford's going to lose five billion dollars this year on electric vehicles. It loses forty-four thousand dollars on every EV it sells. Ultimately, the American taxpayers, in order to save these companies, will have to bail them out again. Ford will get a bailout, which it didn't last time. Well, Dagan, I think that who's going to bail out the, the auto companies is going to be China. If you look at what's going on in Europe, Europe is trying to fight off the Chinese behemoth with e on EVs, um, and, and they're struggling with it. They've tried tariffs. Tariffs are not working. China is buying up 
uh, is, is selling EV. They're making EVs in Europe now and selling them. The same thing is going to happen here. Uh, the Chinese are going to wind up buying our car companies. We're going to be making EVs. We're going to be dependent on China. You know, as it is, you cannot make an EV anywhere in the world without communist China. There's just, there are materials that go into these things, especially the processed graphite. The only source is communist China. So in a sense, it already owns the uh, car, the global car industry, but it wants to dominate it because as you know, China's agenda is to be the lone global superpower by 2049, and they want to dominate all industries, and it includes the car industry, and it's happening. Brian, before we go, just uh, real quick, what's your message to Kamala Harris? Well, well, I have I have no message to Kamala Harris. She is not going to be elected president. Michigan is going to go for Trump because our economy depends on it. And Donald Trump is going to turn this thing around. I don't even want to talk about Kamala Harris. She's she's a liberal attorney from San Francisco who destroyed that city. Then when, as attorney general, she helped destroy the state of California. Michigan is not going to vote for her. We're going to vote for Donald Trump. And the minute we go for Trump on election night, it's election over. Trump wins. Brian and Steve, uh, both well said. Thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. We're going to keep following this story of EVs Thank in you. Michigan.